This video is an introduction to the JSON data type, which was made production ready in ClickHouse 25.3. We're going to see how to use it with the Blue Sky data set that we've used in several blog posts. I'll link those in the description below. This query here is how we can create our Blue Sky table with 100 million records. You can see we're just ordering it by an empty, so it's just gonna put it in insertion order just so we can see what happens. And then we need to tell it that we're gonna be reading the data as JSON as object in order for it to process it as a JSON object. And finally, this is gonna take about five minutes to run. So I've run it already to save us the uh, boredom of watching this live. We can then have a look at the table that's been created. So you can see here we've got a JSON data type and it's ordered by the empty tuple. Let's have a look at what one of the records in our table looks like. If we scroll up, we can see we've got quite a nested record. So this particular record is a post. And if we come back down, we can see the text and when it was posted. We can also use the distinct JSON paths function to get all the distinct paths in our table. So I'm gonna do this just for a million rows and you can see it comes back. There's some paths, just single values at the top level, but then there are a lot of nested ones. We've only done it for a million rows just to make it a bit faster, but there are actually more than this if you run it over all 100 million rows. We can query a literal value. So for example, the kind property is a literal value. We can count how many different kinds we've got. So you can see it comes back. We've got commit, we've got identity, and we've got account. We can query a subcolumn as well. So commit is a subcolumn. So let's write a query against that. And you can see it comes back as null. Now the problem there is that if we want to get back a subcolumn, we need to use the caret symbol instead. So if we change that query, you can see we now get back the JSON for just that commit property. We can go inside the commit and get the langs. And this time we don't need that caret because langs is a literal value. We can count the different languages we've got. And you can see it comes back. So English is actually at the top, then Japanese, Spanish, and German, and French. You see at the top is null. Now that means that there wasn't a value for that particular property. And we can filter that out by just doing an is not null check. And now you can see we don't have any null values in there. We can also do a count of the records where it's a kind is a commit, where the collection is a post, and where English is one of the languages. So you can see if we run that query, we get back an error saying that the has function needs to have an array or a map, but we've got a value of dynamic. Now I'm fairly sure that the langs is an array of strings, but we can check using the distinct dynamic types function. And you can see that comes back, so we've got an array of nullable strings. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cast it to an array of strings, we'll run the query again, and you can see this time it runs successfully. I've also created another table called blue sky two. So in this one, we've given some type hints inside our JSON structure. So we've said that kind is gonna be a low cardinality string, and we're also gonna order the data by that kind. And we can then come back and update one of our previous queries that was counting the number of kinds. And we'll change that to run against blue sky too. And you can see that now runs much more quickly because the data is now sorted by that property. And so this takes 0.2 seconds, whereas before it took 1.9 seconds. We can also have a look at that other query where we were filtering for the English language. So we'll change that from blue sky to blue sky two. And that now takes 0.5 seconds compared to 0.9 seconds on our initial table. And let's do one more. So we've got blue sky three. And in this one, as well as having that kind specified, we're also using the skip regex to tell it, I don't want to store some particular paths in the document. And then if we write this query here, we can see how much space is being taken up by each of the tables. So you can see blue sky and blue sky two are pretty similar. Blue sky three has a little bit less space taken because we've filtered out some of the paths. For more ClickHouse videos covering new features, check out this playlist next.